Chippendale Rescue Rangers has finally hit Disney+, Plus, and the movie offers up hundreds of cameos from favourite animated characters and easter eggs to some of our favourite pop culture. In this video I'll break down all the tidbits that I could find separated by topic. I've gone to the effort of time coding these on the timeline below. Of course I'm sure there are plenty that I've missed so if you spotted anything that I didn't make sure you weigh in with those down in the comments. Also don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Obviously this video contains hundreds of spoilers so watch at your own peril. Let's get into it. Let's start off by taking a look at numerous references to the classic Rescue Rangers series. Clips of various Rescue Rangers episodes and the original opening sequence are shown during the film's recap introduction. Here all of the series characters get a quick introduction. A number of classic episodes are mentioned, including Cattery's Not Included, Throw Mummy From The Train, Dirty Rotten Diapers, Pie In The Sky, Rest Home Rangers, Le Perfect Crime, Short Order Crooks, Robo Cats, Puffed Rangers, Gorilla My Dreams, and the SS Drainpipe. When You Fish Upon a Star is also mentioned by Ellie, using it to inspire the solving of the movie's crime. Numerous fake episodes are mentioned throughout the movie as well. Chippendale referred to episode 121, Mission Chip Possible, as well as episode 325. In reality, the show only lasted 65 episodes, with the series seemingly having a much longer life in this in-universe continuity. Notably, clips of fake episode Fat Cat Attack play in the intro. Here we see the series' main antagonist, Fat Cat, who is once again voiced by his original voice artist, Jim Cummings. When Chip and Dale decide to take on the challenge of finding Monty, the title The Case of the Missing Monty briefly flashes on the screen in the style of the classic series titles. While Chip and Dale, the actors, are voiced by Andy Samberg and John Mulaney, there are numerous instances of them talking in their classic high-pitched chipmunk voices, including a flashback where the two are brainstorming ideas for the series and later when the pair get in a heated argument during the present day. The greatest part about these moments is that they're actually voiced by the original Rescue Rangers voices, Tress McNeil as Chip and Corey Burton as Dale. The two also return to voice their other roles, Gadget and Zipper respectively. While Gadget and Zipper aren't seen very much in this movie, they make a spectacular entrance in The Ranger Plane, their classic vehicle from the series. As Chip and Dale run through the pop culture convention, they pass through an Indiana Jones stall selling themed clothing and merch. Chip winds up in an Indiana Jones costume, which was in fact the inspiration for his costume in the original show. Dale's costume was inspired by Tom Selleck's Thomas Magnum from classic 80s series Magnum P.I. He, however, is in his classic top for most of the movie. It's here that Chip and Dale wind up in their original costumes together. Dale is also revealed to have a garage full of classic Rescue Rangers merch, including toys, figures, plushies, costumes, statues, books, posters, magazines, fireworks, and plenty more. While much of this has very likely been created specifically for the movie, there are a number of real items seen here, including the classic 1990s Capcom arcade game, a vintage Rescue Rangers lunchbox and a selection of VHS collections, including Undercover Critters, Double Trouble and Crime Busters. A Rescue Rangers cologne is also seen numerous times, but thankfully this was not a real product. The Chip and Dale theme is heard multiple times throughout the movie. Firstly, the original theme is heard during the introductory sequence. A cinematic version can briefly be heard as a sting in the film's score during a number of action sequences. And a contemporary cover version by Post Malone can be heard over the credits. Now let's take a look at the Disney characters that cameo in the movie. We get a glimpse of a traditionally animated cartoon car dropping its car kids off to school during the flashback sequence. While this isn't any particular character, it's certainly reminiscent of the cars seen in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, particularly Benny the Cab. Later in the movie, during the modern day, we also see a couple of 3D animated cars, reminiscent of those from Pixar's Cars movies. I think the parallels here are brilliant and it's a great little visual gag with a clever payoff. Clarabelle Cow makes a brief appearance as a school teacher while her on and off partner Horace Horsecollar appears in a funny old movie that Chip and Dale are watching. Donald Duck gets a quick mention when a teacher tells a cartoon student Eddie you're not Donald Duck! Put some pants on please! 
referring to Donald's often pantsless appearance. Scrooge McDuck, however, makes a brief appearance in his original form, counting his money at the facility. While his effigy can be seen on $100 notes during the film's credits, this time in his DuckTales reboot design. The obscure Willy the Giant, featured in 1947's Mickey and the Beanstalk, can be seen standing on the side of the road. The three little pigs from Walt Disney's classic 1930s silly symphonies briefly appear on the dance floor, as does Roger Rabbit from the movie that inspired it all. While she doesn't appear, Roger's wife Jessica Rabbit is briefly mentioned. Also on the dance floor we get to briefly see MC Scat Cat and Paula Abdul from her 1989 music video Opposites Attract. While MC Scat Cat may not be a Disney character per se, his animation was handled by numerous Disney artists of the time. The Little Mermaid's Flounder is one of the first tunes to be kidnapped and bootlegged. As he is, he tries to distract his kidnappers with a Dinglehopper, the name given to a fork by the sea creatures in the movie. As he holds it up he says, Isn't it neat? Referencing lyrics from Ariel's song, Part of Your World. The Jungle Book's Baloo makes a couple of appearances in his CGI form from the 2016 live action remake. Dale mentions, Baloo was part of the Disney afternoon just like me. Then he got the Jungle Book reboot and boom, he's back on top. Referring to not only the 2016 movie, but the Disney afternoon series Tailspin. Here Baloo is singing his classic Jungle Book song, Bear Necessities. Beauty and the Beast's Lumiere also makes a number of appearances at the convention. However, interestingly, he's in his 1991 classic form, not his 2017 CGI for. He also tells Bob the Viking to be my guest. A reference to his Beauty and the Beast song, Be Our Guest. One of my favourite convention cameos is Darkwing Duck. Oh yes, we want Darkwing! We want Darkwing! Who sits at a stall heckling the Chippendale reboot and calling for a new Darkwing one. In fact, there is apparently a Darkwing reboot in the works, so this could be a really meta easter egg. Kronk from The Emperor's New Groove can also be briefly seen with his own stall, while Doc McStuffins makes a blink and you'll miss her cameo too. One of the greatest moments comes when Seth Rogen's Bob the Viking meets up with Rogen's CG version of Pumbaa from the 2019 Lion King remake. Cubby, one of the Lost Boys from Peter Pan, also has an extended cameo in the same sequence, reuniting with Peter after all these years. Of course, Peter appears here as the film's major villain, having left Neverland and grown up against his vows. When we first meet him, he tells Chip and Dale about his life post growing up, where he talks about hitting rock bottom after he was thrown away like he was nothing. During this speech, we get a really great traditionally animated sequence, which acts as a sort of faux Peter Pan sequel parody. Later in the movie, a sting from You Can Fly, the main song from Peter Pan, can be heard built into the School. Think happy little thoughts. <laughs> I definitely pulled something. Doug Funny and his canine pal Porkchop from Disney's Doug, originally created at Nickelodeon, can be seen on a movie poster that Dale drives past called Funny and Porkchop. I'll tell you, this is a movie I would love to see. Two more Blink and You'll Miss Them cameos appear in the Main Street sequence Linda Flynn Fletcher, Phineas and Ferb's mum, and the Colonel from Lady and the Tramp, who's hanging out a window. Nightmare Before Christmas's Jack Skellington is briefly mentioned when Bob says, You're going to arrest me while Jack Skellington's been embezzling from his own charity for years? Everyone knows it! While Rapunzel herself doesn't appear in the movie, a tangled doll does appear in the sewers, where Chip and Dale pull her long hair to save themselves from drowning. One of my favourite moments in the movie is a poster for a fake Disney Afternoon Block fighting game similar to Nintendo's Super Smash Bros. called Disney Afternoon Fight Fest, which features a whole lot of characters characters from Disney Afternoon Block shows including the Rescue Rangers, Timon and Pumbaa, Aladdin, Gummy Bears, Gargoyles, Goof Troop, Darkwing Duck, The Schnookums and Meat Funny Cartoon Show, Tailspin, DuckTales and Bonkers. Now let's take a look at some animated cameos from characters that come from outside of Disney. The biggest cameo in this movie is of course Ugly Sonic, the version of the character that appeared in the first trailer for the 2020 Sonic movie before being altered following and backlash. He appears in the movie numerous times, with plenty of jokes thrown around about how he's a creepy, rejected and abandoned character. How they managed to get the rights to use this guy is absolutely beyond me. Numerous Transformers are seen throughout the movie, as is Transformers precursor Voltron, who gets his own booth at the convention. 
Marvel's Tigra also appears at the convention in her own booth. Tigra was a regular member of the roster of 1999's Avengers United They Stand animated series. The show was even referenced on several posters at her booth. Likewise, He-Man and Skeletor from Masters of the Universe are seen bickering at a booth together as well. A whole bunch of My Little Pony characters also make an appearance during the convention chase scene, while moments later, when Seth Rogen's Bob the Viking meets his version of Pumbaa, another two Rogen voice characters join the party. Mantis from Kung Fu Panda and Blob from Monsters vs. Aliens, both DreamWorks films. During this sequence, Chip and Dale are seen sliding down the back of a dinosaur, similar to Fred Flintstone's maneuver in the classic Flintstones opening sequence. Earlier in the movie, Fred's pet dinosaur Dino can also be seen. Mighty Mouse even makes a very brief, obscured appearance on a of Vegemite in Monty's fridge. This is of course, alternatively, a reference to Australian food spread Vegemite. Felix the Cat makes an appearance in doll form floating in the sewer, while bottles of Shrek body wash are seen to have been collected up by Peter Pan and turned into toilets. In case you were wondering, yes, these were a real thing. Peppa Pig is also mentioned several times as one of the characters who's gone missing. It's also mentioned that the entire Nickelodeon Studios, which airs the show in the US, banded together to help find her. Another Nickelodeon reference comes when Captain Putty exclaims, And I hope we don't get attacked by the Rugrats this time. <laughs> when Chip gets briefly zapped by the bootlegging machine, he's given a Snoopy ear, a reference to the favourite beagle from Peanuts. At one point, Captain Captain Putty is referred to as a low-rent Gumby, the character he is clearly based on. Dobby from Harry Potter can be spotted on a Gucci advertisement, and Cartoon Network's Johnny Bravo appears on a billboard for Johnny Bravo Fitness, likely his in-universe gym. A couple of enormous shocks, Randy Marsh from South Park is briefly seen sitting in a sauna, while Detective Flores from Big Mouth can be seen sitting in the police station. Butthead from Beavis and Butthead can also be seen on a political bench as Senator Butthead. A number of characters can also be seen with their names on the Hollywood Boulevard Walk of Fame, including SpongeBob's Squidward, Yogi Bear, Samurai Jack, and Street Fighter's Chun-Li. We get plenty more characters in bootleg form, and again, some are from Disney and some are not. Given the Frankenstein-like nature of some of these, it is a little bit hard to split the Disney characters from the non-Disney, so let's just talk about them all. Firstly, we get to see some hilarious bootleg Disney titles throughout the movie, referencing the decades-long craze of cheap animation houses producing Disney knockoff films. We get to see the small fish lady, aka the little mermaid, flying bedroom boy, aka Peter Pan, Beauty and the Cursed Dog Man, aka Beauty and the Beast, Spaghetti Dogs and Spaghetti Dogs 2, aka Lady and the Tramp, Farm Beasts, aka The Lion King, Stupido the Elephant Baby, The Dumbo Takeoff starring bootleg Dumbo Monty, Rad Pan, a CG Peter Pan ripoff, and Pooj the Fat Honey Bear, aka Winnie the Pooh. We actually get to see the making of the Pooj movie as Chip and Dale interrupt its filming on a soundstage. Here we see a bootleg honey Acre Wood and bootleg versions of Pooh, Tigger and Piglet. We also see them filming a bootleg Simpsons in a parody of the series opening sequence. Here we see bootleg Homer, bootleg Marge and bootleg Bart who looks at the camera and shouts I pachanga. A riff on Bart's classic 90s catchphrase I caramba. We also see a bootleg Aladdin being filmed where Goofy's rival Pete is standing in for Aladdin. Here going by the name Prince Jali instead of Prince Ali. There's some non-Disney bootleg movies here too, including Jasper the Dead Ghost Kid, aka Casper the Friendly Ghost, Matilda Fully Loaded, a new age action-packed reboot of 90s favourite family comedy Matilda, Weirder Stuff, aka Stranger Things, Now That's What I Call Cartoons Rapping, a riff on the popular music compilation albums, and Bubba Gump Restaurant The Movie, with the tagline based on the restaurant from the hit film. Of course, the Bubba Gump restaurants were based on 1990 for's Forrest Gump. This is a great gag about movies being based on things based on movies. We first come across our bootleg characters when Chip and Dale infiltrate Peter Pan's facility. 
Here we can see bootleg versions of the Looney Tunes Elmer Fudd, Jiminy Cricket from Pinocchio, Flounder, Snow White Sneezy, and hybrid bootlegs of Sideshow Bob from The Simpsons crossed with Syndrome from The Incredibles, Pink Panther crossed with Felix the Cat, Cinderella's Gus Mouse crossed with Alice in Wonderland's Tweedledum and Tweedledee, the Looney Tunes Tweety Bird cross Ronky and Bullwinkle's Bullwinkle J Moose, and Monsters Inc.'s Mike Wazowski crossed with Boo. We also see a buff Garfield, a throwback to the internet memes. While we don't see him, the name Foghorn can be seen written on the wall, a clear reference to the Looney Tunes Foghorn Leghorn. As they get further into the facility, Chip and Dale come across a frightening collection of cartoon parts, which includes Jiminy Cricket's umbrella, Jiminy Cricket's hat, Captain Hook's hook, Little John from Robin Hood's hat, Samurai Jack's samurai sword, Pete's classic peg leg, a bear muzzle, possibly from one of Disney's gummy bears or Robin Hood's Little John, the mouth of Icarus from Nickelodeon's Ah! Real Monsters, as well as one of his ears, the hair of Jimmy Neutron, Sora's keyblade from Kingdom Hearts, Shenron from Dragon Ball Z, Mickey Mouse's glove, the nose and mouth of Cinderella's Gus Mouse, the eyes of Guardians of the Galaxy's Baby Groot, the body of Mr. Potato Head from Toy Story, Pink Panther's muzzle, the helmet of Rocky and Bullwinkle's Rocky the Flying Squirrel, a Smurf hat, the ears of Bartok the Magnificent from Anastasia, and a brown piece of anime hair. Of course, at the end of the movie, we're absolutely inundated with character bootlegs. While I absolutely couldn't pick them all, here's the ones I could. Fred Flintstone cross King Louie cross Goofy, an evil Mighty Mouse, Aladdin's Iago cross Fruit Loops's Toucan Sam, Woody Woodpecker cross Casper the Friendly Ghost, Samurai Jack cross Anthropomorphic Black Cat, SpongeBob's Patrick Star cross Fraggle Rock character, Aladdin's Abu cross Nintendo's Diddy Kong, Phineas cross Chuck Jones's Go Go Dodo, Bootleg Launchpad McQuack, Bootleg Dipper from Gravity Falls, Bootleg Jiminy Cricket, Pooh's Tigger cross Alice's Cheshire Cat, Jungle Book's Car with Human Legs, Obelix from Asterix cross with a dragon, possibly Pete's Dragon Elliot, Bootleg Cow from Cow and Chicken, Bootleg Purple Gumball character, Cinderella's Gus cross with a bird, Hercules Pegasus cross Bambi, Bootleg Heifer from Rocco's Modern Life, Avatar's Ang cross with a wise old man, Bootleg Sneezy holding bootleg flounder, Rescue Rangers' Monty mixed with Dumbo, hybrid Zummy Gummy Bear, hybrid Care Bear, and Disney Afternoon's Bonkers cross Alice in Wonderland's Walrus. Of course, our major bootleg character is the film's villain, a Frankenstein monster which incorporates Peter Pan's body, Wreck-It Ralph's arm, Woody from Toy Story's leg, Optimus Prime from the Transformers leg, the head of the Rescue Rangers Fat Cat, and the bow and ribbon of Marie from the Aristocats. He's also sporting a familiar coat, but I can't quite put my finger on it. His voices are made of classic Disney characters too, as he's heard shouting Ralph's catchphrase, I'm gonna wreck them! Cackles like Sleeping Beauty's Maleficent, <laughs> and utters, You fools! like 101 Dalmatians' Cruella de Vil. Our secondary villain, Jimmy the Polar Bear, is also defeated by being zapped into a bootleg fairy godmother from Sleeping Beauty. Of course, a big chunk of the movie takes place at a pop culture convention, and these scenes are absolutely littered with cosplay character cameos from both Disney and other studios. Throughout the movie we see Sailor Moon, Charlie Brown, Harley Quinn, Mario, Ernie from Sesame Street, Moana, Avengers Endgame Thor, Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, Star Wars' Princess Leia and Kylo Ren, Star Wars creator George Lucas, a Queen Amidala handmaiden, possibly Padme from Star Wars The Phantom Menace, Wonder Woman, a guy wearing Bugs Bunny's Space Jam jersey, Captain Jack Sparrow from Pirates, a random Lego man, Pickle Rick from Rick and Morty, Pee Wee Herman, Borat, George Jetson, Ash Ketchum from Pokemon, a girl with Princess Leia buns, a girl with a Batman t-shirt, an animated girl with a Ghostbusters t-shirt, a guy with a half Batman, half Joker face paint, Pixar's Coco, Beauty and the Beast's Belle, and Bender from Futurama. 
Now let's take a look at some of the more general Disney references throughout the movie. The movie kicks off as all Disney movies do with the Cinderella castle opening. Soon enough it finds itself zapped into a hybrid bootleg castle. It's easy to note of course Elsa's ice palace from Frozen and the Sultan's palace from Aladdin. The top right resembles Eric's castle from The Little Mermaid. The bottom right portion is incredibly obscure showing the stylized castle from the opening of Pixar's Incredibles 2. When Pete is deciding which method of torture to use on Chip before choosing an eraser, he passes over a vial of dip. This is quite possibly the dip or toon acid at the heart of Who Framed Roger Rabbit, a green chemical which is being used by Judge Doom to brutally execute toons. While she doesn't appear in the movie outside of cosplay form, a jar of Moana branded peanuts can be seen, likely a reference to healthy foods being branded with cartoon characters to convince children to eat them. The character of Greg Fanboy, a huge fan of Chip and Dale, plays a remix of the Disney Afternoon theme song when he meets the duo. Oh, no way! Is this a remix of the Disney Afternoon theme song? You made this? Chip and Dale find themselves exploring a main street, clearly inspired by the central hub of all the Disney parks. Here we not only see some actual Disney characters, but some Disney inspired characters, such as a bread salesman singing about having bread for sale in a beauty and the Beast type moment. Chip later reminisces over a photo of the Rescue Rangers crew at Disneyland during their heyday and after Chip and Ally blow up the lab, a rocket is sent flying into the sky, exploding in the shape of Mickey Mouse ears like the fireworks display often seen at Disney parks. This is accompanied by a short musical sting of Pinocchio's When You Wish Upon a Star, often used in the finale of the displays, and the iconic theme tune that kicks off every Disney movie. At the convention center, a poster can be spotted for Pirates of the Great Lakes, seemingly the latest Pirates of the Caribbean spin-off set in the Michigan Great Lakes, seas that were once ruled by fearsome pirates. Is this just a tongue-in-cheek gag for a series that's taken a gigantic leap off the diving board, or an actual teaser for one of the upcoming Pirates films that are currently in the works? During one of the credits transitions, we get a brief look at The Boy Who Grew Up, a fake documentary set in a Disney Plus style interface. There's plenty of general animation references here too, with dozens of forms of animation represented throughout various characters in the movie, both main and background. We've got lead characters who are traditionally animated, like Chip, and others who are 3D, like Dale. Here, Dale has actually had CGI surgery to help him stay relevant, a clear jab at all the animation to live action reboots Disney have been pumping out with characters now in contemporary animation. We've also got a claymation character in the form of Captain Putty, similar to the classic Gumby style. We also see an Ardman style claymation sheep, possibly from Shaun the Sheep. There's also the Muppets-esque Mr. Bjornsson, a puppet character who helps Chip and Dale on their plight. He's a slight riff on the Muppets Swedish Chef. We see a couple of other Muppets brawling in a jail, more so resembling the adult puppets from cult web series Don't Hug Me I'm Scared. Reffing the fight, however, is Elmo from Sesame Street. We also briefly get a sock puppet police officer. We see a Super 2000's anaglyph red blue glasses 3D character, a reporter from 3D In Your Face News, and a classic 1920's rubber hose character who claims to be a reporter from Black and White News. While in the facility, Chip and Dale slip into a machine that renders them in various different cartoon styles, including The Simpsons, Anime, Rick and Morty, 1920s Rubber Hose, The Simpsons, again, a furry humanoid style, Marvel and DC comic book style, Ren and Stimpy Spumco style, and Simple Anthropomorphic. We get an entire sequence set in the Uncanny Valley, which Chip beautifully describes as a term for that weird animation style in the early 2000s where everything looked real but nothing looked right. Here we meet up with Seth Rogen's Bob the Viking, designed after the creepy characters from this era of animation, with possibly a touch of influence from the Lord of the Rings Gimli or Robert Zemeckis' Beowulf. Chip refers to him as having polar express eyes, referencing the mocap movie which is often cited when discussing the Uncanny Valley effect. Also in the Uncanny Valley we get a brief glimpse at the creepy cat from 2019's much maligned Cats movie. 
We also get some generic pop culture references here too. Of course, there's the appearance of a clip from the Abbott and Costello show featuring Bud Abbott while Lou Costello is replaced by Horace Horsecollar. During flashback sequences, Dale is seen with a Knight Rider lunchbox featuring images of David Hasselhoff's Michael Knight. Of course, this was an incredibly popular TV series which debuted in 1982, the year the flashbacks are set. Chip and Dale are also seen watching an episode of Full House. We see practically the entire cast here but most notably John Stamos, who is an enormous Disney fan. Chip is also briefly seen watching the live-action Alvin and the Chipmunks movie, another famous chipmunk group. Later in the movie, Peter Pan tells Chip, I was always more of an Alvin and the Chipmunks person. Which, of course, deeply offends him. Dale is seen wearing an outfit reminiscent of those worn by MC Hammer in the early 1990s and even does his classic Hammer Time dance. We get a brief nod to the male stripper troupe, the Chippendales. That's C H I double P E N D A L E S as one word for those confused. During the filming of a Rescue Rangers episode, we get a glimpse of the show's director. While it's not explicitly stated, the director's glasses, baseball cap with movie logo, jacket, jeans, and haircut are very reminiscent of Steven Spielberg in the era. In a double whammy Easter egg, the actor here is in fact Akiva Schaefer, the director of of the movie. Once more, Spielberg's Indiana Jones gets that quick mention here, as does Jurassic Park in this riff on the iconic T-Rex scene. Appearing on posters are Star Wars' Greedo and Salicious Crumb on the exterior of the convention center. The Mission Impossible movies also get an elaborate reference as Chip and Dale make their way through a laser field to reach the end of the facility. The Chipmunks liken the situation to episode 121, Mission Chip Possible, which again is not a real episode. During the climax, Captain Putty is thrown against a wall where he hits a newspaper. As he peels away, the newspaper has transferred to his head. He remarks that it's stuck to his head like Silly Putty. This was a common novelty way for people to collect comic strips from newspapers back in the day. Captain Putty dissolves himself in a way similar to the villainous T-1000 in Terminator 2, while a brief riff from the film's theme also plays. After a skirmish, he latches himself onto Ali like the face hugger from Alien. To defeat him, Ali freezes and smashes him, the same way the T-1000 goes out in T-2. At the film's end, the giant Frankenstein's bootleg is taken out by having a bunch of barrel drums dropped on his head. Before it lands, he breaks the fourth wall, looks to the camera, gulps, and raises an umbrella, which makes a cartoony boing sound. This is reminiscent of the classic Wile E. Coyote Looney Tunes cartoons. Following the end of the original Chip and Dale, Dale goes off to star in his own series called Double O Dale, quite clearly a James Bond knockoff, with a poster featuring the classic gun barrel, gun pose, tuxedo, and female silhouettes. During the film's credits, we even get to see this in action, taking on the form of the classic Bond gun barrel openings, panning out to reveal a VHS cover featuring artwork similar to the poster of 1981's Roger Moore Bond flick for your eyes only. Throughout the movie, a number of other fake movie posters and concepts are also seen. A poster for Waze the Movie, based on the navigation app of the same name, a nice satire on Hollywood's affinity of basing movies on the dumbest things. There's a billboard for Lego Miserable, a Lego retelling of Les Miserables, showing just how far Lego has gone in this universe. A poster for President Dog 3 is seen, a generic talking dog movie. President Dog 4 is later seen amongst a collection of bootleg movies. A gender-bent Mrs. Doubtfire remake called Mr. Doubtfire starring Meryl Streep with the tagline, New Family, New Imposter. And an insane Batman vs. E.T. crossover spotlighting how Hollywood has simply gone too far, with Chip remarking, they think they can squeeze a dollar out of essentially nothing. Chip is later seen watching a small clip from the movie, which sees E.T. dying in the arms of Batman, who appears in his Batman v Superman battle armor. There's also a poster for Fast and Furious Babies, a great parody on the seemingly never-ending Fast franchise. Fast franchise star Vin Diesel also appears during the film's credits, seemingly leading the pack in the faux Rescue Rangers reboot, which seems to take the style of a fast film. Talking cameos, Paul Rudd makes a terrific one, where he's appearing at an in-person signing at the Comic Con. Here, someone holds an Ant-Man and the Wasp Giant Man pop vinyl for him to sign, while he discusses how the movie was originally supposed to be called Ant-Man. My superpower was being really charming to aunts. In the credits, we likewise get a brief glimpse at the poster for the ill-fated Ant-Man starring Rudd. 
Dale shows off his Chippendale Rescue Rangers Pog collection. Pogs were of course collectible discs that 90s kids went mad for. If like me you hail from Australia, you may remember these as Tarzos. While I can't find any confirmation that Rescue Rangers Pogs ever existed, Disney certainly did get in on the craze. Dale also notes that the Pog set became a collectible because someone noticed that a cloud behind Monty looked like Oprah Winfrey, easily the most famous talk show host in the 1990s. 90s. Doing an impression of Monty, an Australian rat, Dale utters the phrase, Throw another shrimp on the barbie! This is a phrase that's become synonymous with Australia, having spawned from a series of early 80s tourism commercials starring Crocodile Dundee himself, Paul Hogan. And no, you are absolutely not getting me to say it. When Chip and Dale infiltrate the facility, they dress as New York rats, and Chip at one point says, I'm walking here! Referencing Dustin Hoffman's famously ad-libbed line from 1969's Midnight Cowboy. I'm walking here! I'm walking here! Where he played a character named Ratso Rizzo. Dale also notes that his New York Italian American accent got him fired from Law and & Order. And finally, a nice little touch with the end credits as director Akiva Schaefer's name gets bootlegged with letters from various movie logos, including Indiana Jones, Jurassic Park, Star Wars and James Cameron's Avatar. And with that, I'm throwing it over to you. Did I miss anything that you spotted? Make sure you let me know down below. If you'd like to know my full thoughts on the movie, you can check out my review linked on your screen, alongside my Cartoon Evolution episode charting the character's extensive history. Also, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching.